I have over 90 inches of fish in this 20 gallon fish tank. Now, by the one inch per gallon rule, this tank is very overstocked. But if we look at this fish tank, we see over 30 fish in this 20 gallon long fish tank. Uh, but what we don't see is signs of aggression, stress, um, fish not being able to swim around freely. And that's really the key here. When we're talking about overstocking your fish tank, we're talking about having more fish than what traditional fish fish keepers normally have in their tank, right? We're not talking about having so many fish that they can't move around. Having so many fish that aggression is just a very reoccurring thing, right? I'm not talking about those scenarios. I'm talking about an overstock tank over the one inch per gallon rule, over what most people traditionally do. Now you made me think to yourself, yeah, Andrew, you can do that, but then you're gonna have to do water changes every day, every week, something like that. And I'll say, no, that's not the case. I only do one to two water changes every three to four months, and that's it. Now, the key here for me, there's really two things that I do um, that I think help manage having an overstock tank in this kind of capacity here. And so if you find yourself with an overstock tank, whether you have live bears, mollies, guppies, pilates that just had a ton of babies and now you just have a ton of fish in your tank, well, how do you manage that? And really, I think you need two key things to kind of manage, I guess, the overstockness of your fish tank. And number one is having fish in layers. So what does that mean? So all fish have a preferred swimming zone, right? Some fish like to hang out towards the bottom of the fish tank, towards the substrate. Those are your Corydoras, your gobies, your loaches, your cichlids. Then you have those fish that like to swim in the middle layer, right? Think most of your tetras, um, some rasboras, right? And then you have the fish that like to swim towards the top of the fish tank. So those are your bettas, your garamis, your hatch fish, um, your wrestling half beaks, right? And so if you stack your fish um, appropriately on each level, well, where is that fish gonna hang out the most? If he's gonna hang out the top, then what you have at the bottom doesn't really affect that top fish in terms of swimming space. So you kinda gotta think about it in terms of that perspective. Um, if you're gonna have a slightly overstocked fish tank, right, that's still safe for your fish, right? Let, let's remember that. We wanna make sure it isn't gonna increase aggression and we wanna make sure that there's still enough swimming room for the fish. Um, you can go well over the one inch per gallon rule. And one of the ways is by properly laying your layering your fish and so a good thing you guys want to do is research okay what layer of the water column does this fish swim at and if you guys aren't sure of the answer I went ahead and made a Excel downloadable on my website thedirtytake.com go ahead and take a look at it um, you just have to put your email address in uh, it's completely free and I will send you my downloadable of all the different fish in their preferred swimming layer and that way you just have a quick glance to know exactly which fish and where he's gonna uh, swim at to see if he's compatible from a water column um, perspective now the second thing that helps me manage having a overstock fish tank is having a ton of filtration and I'm not talking about filters, I'm not talking about canister filters or internal or sumps or any of that. I'm talking about plants, right? The plants that are doing the filtration for us, right? Um, and in my opinion, the best kind of filtration that you can get. Um, so the second thing to managing a overstocked fish tank is having a ton of plants because they're going to do two things. One, they're going to keep your water very healthy, but two, they're going to provide um, a lot of hiding spaces to your aquarium. So some of your shy fish won't act out in aggression because they have a space to call their own. Some of your more territorial type fish aren't going to act out aggressively because they have a space to call their own. And some of your just overactive fish, right? Um, they can't go everywhere because maybe there's a big forest of java fern or a big forest of cryptocorn that they just don't want to go into where some of your other fish that like to explore and like to go in the nooks and crannies can kind of feel at home um, and at peace and, and, and alone it. And so if you're thinking, well, you know, I have, um, I have a fish tank, it's overstocked, but I don't have a lot of plants in it. You know, if I've tried plants in the past and they always die. 
And what I would say to you is get some beginner friendly plants that are easy to grow. Um, and I'm gonna recommend a few for you now. One will be floating plants, right? Floating plants is a great way for baby fry and smaller fish to hide and just feel comfortable in. It's a great place for shrimp to graze and it's a great place for your top dwelling fish to kind of meander through and be entertained and find things to eat at the very top surface of your fish tank. And so I would recommend red root floaters, uh, duckweed, buy duckweed, um, or get some dwarf water lettuce, um, Sylvania minima, frog bed, any of those would do great floating plants. Now we actually sell floating plants on our website. We sell red root floater and dwarf water lettuce. So if you're interested in those, go ahead and check out that. Um, we appreciate your support um, on shopping on our website. It helps fund all the videos uh, that we do here. But even if you don't buy from the website, buy some. Go to your local fish store, buy some floating plants because they're so helpful. Um, one, for the water quality, and two, for those top level fish and some of your fry to really hang out in. Um, and feel very safe and comfortable. And in my opinion, they look pretty cool. The roots kind of hanging down a little bit. Uh, it adds an extra element to your fish tank that you wouldn't have normally. Now, another plant that I recommend for beginners is any epiphyte type plant. And so when I say epiphyte, I mean a plant that does not need to be planted into the substrate. And so there's really two main plants that I think are more beginner friendly um, that you don't need to plant in the substrate. And that's gonna be Java fern and Anubius. And both of those are either glued or tied to rock or driftwood. Um, or just like suction, suction cup to the side of your glass um, and it's gonna get most of its nutrients and clean the water um, from the water column without having to be planted into the substrate. So you don't have to worry about getting a nutrient rich substrate. Um, and it's gonna one, provide plenty of hides, but at the same time still filter out some of that gunk that's going through your water. Now there are a couple more plants that I really like that I think are great for beginners. And one is gonna be dwarf sag, and it's a great low tech carpeting plant. You don't have to have a nutrient rich substrate, but if you do, it's gonna make it grow even faster. But it grows like long grass um, looking type plant that will cover traditionally your foreground. It will get three or four inches tall, but you can cut it down to you know two or three inches uh, as it gets too tall. And it will slowly propagate and carpet your entire uh, tank. So it's gonna look really good. And it allows those bottom dwellers, your Corydoras, your Cuiloches, your Dwarf Cichlids, to kind of just have a great place to explore and to call their own and feel sheltered. Um, and it's great for those bottom dwelling fish. Um, now, a couple other really good beginner friendly plants that I really like are cryptocorn. Uh, cryptocorn is planted in the substrate um, and it's really good about developing a huge root system. And that's good for two reasons. One, it can't easily be taken out. Right? If you ever bought a stem plant, right, the, the next day they're floating in the water because a fish swam by it too quickly and it's floating in the substrate now or in the, in the water column. Um, but cryptocorn does a great job about uh, really growing out an intensive root system uh, so that it can feed itself um, and it stays secured within your substrate so it doesn't get pulled up. Um, and it's really easy to gr grow. It doesn't require a uh, high amount of light, um, but it is a heavy root feeder, right? So if you have a nutrient-rich substrate, that's gonna help. If you have a, uh, if you have root taps, that's really gonna help as well. Now, the last plant that I'm recommend is actually three plants, and I'm gonna kinda group them all the same way because they're so easy to grow, you just throw them in there. And that's Java moss. It's great, you can just throw it in your fish tank or you can glue it or tie it to a rock or driftwood and it's just gonna grow like crazy. It's one of the fastest growing aquatic mosses that there, that there are. Um, and it looks really great and fish love picking through it and little fish like can like hide in it. Um, it's really great and shrimp love it too. The other one is Subwasser Tank. This looks a lot like Java moss, but it feels kind of plasticky. And this is something that you just throw in there and it just does its thing and it'll slowly grow and get bigger. Um, um, really great for your nano fish to hide into. And then the third plant is gonna be guppy grass. Guppy grass is just, it, it, it grows really quickly and it stays in the middle of your water column. And so all those middle swimming fish will be able to swim all through it and hide if they need to, um, to spawn, right, to have a place to call their own. 
um, and it's just really good to make the fish feel better that live in that middle area of your water column. So guys, when it comes to managing an overstocked fish tank, really there's uh, two things you need to make sure you have. A ton of plants and that you layer your fish appropriately. Um, so let's talk about my fish tank and what I have in here and how I layered them. First, let's start with the um, bottom dwelling fish. So we have gobies and we actually have two species of gobies. We have four gobies in total. We have one that's called the Chinese vermilion goby and this thing's a little micro predator. It's really cool and they are they do get territorial so they're gonna have to have hides that they can call their own and they'll kind of dig little caves um, next to rocks or driftwood where the sand is. So I do recommend a sandy substrate for most all of the fish that I'm gonna talk about. Um, but the Chinese vermilion goby is really cool He'll feed on little baby shrimplets and he'll even hunt down little baby uh, fish fry. Um, but a really cool fish, he'll eat flakes and pellet as well, so he's very easy to take care of. Now the other goby that we have is the Stiphodon goby or the electric blue neon goby. This one's a little bit more common. You can find them in big box pet stores um, and in most of your local fish stores as well. Now they mainly eat uh, algae and biofilm, so they're very different than the Chinese vermilion goby. Um, they don't hunt as much, right? They prefer algae and biofilm, but I still find them eating flakes that find its way to the bottom as well. Uh, they are kind of territorial as well, so you want to get an appropriate number um, to the amount of hides that you have. They're also going to dig a little cave, right? Um, right at a base of a rock or a driftwood where the sand kind of meets that rock or driftwood. And they're going to kind of make a little cave there, and that's going to be their home. It's really cool to watch them moving around and having little scuffles. Uh, the other bottom dwelling fish I have in here, I have a group of six pygmy Corydoras. They are the smallest Corydora and they're absolutely adorable. Um, if you haven't heard of, you haven't looked at the pygmy Corydora, go ahead and check them out. They're really, really cool fish um, and they're absolutely adorable. Now they're gonna stay in that bottom column, but occasionally they go to the middle, middle column um, and they eat anything that falls to the bottom. So your flakes, um, in your pellets and you can even put some you know cucumber or, or zucchini in there and they'll munch on that a little bit as well. Uh, the other bottom dwelling fish I have in here is the bristlenose placo. I have one juvenile bristlenose placo. I do think once he gets a little bit bigger I'm gonna put him in a 75 gallon because he will get a little bit too big for what I have in here. Um, but a great cleaner fish and he mainly hangs out at the bottom level of the tank. Uh, the other fish I have in here are a school of cooey loaches. I have a small school of cooey loaches um, and they love hanging out in this, what I call the Java fern forest back here, right? Because cooey loaches, as you know, they like to hide and they are nocturnal fish. So they normally only come out at night and they're gonna sift through the substrate. So it's really important to have sand because how they eat is they take a mouthful of sand and they eat whatever food's in there and then they sift out all the sand through their gills. Um, so really cool and fun fish to, to watch whenever they do eat. And traditionally, they're gonna come out out right when you feed them at night. So if you do get cooey loaches, I encourage you to start feeding at night because then you'll actually see them. Um, the other fish that I have uh, at the bottom level, and this isn't a fish, but I counted it just because it's so big and it's a vampire shrimp. Now vampire shrimp, they get like this big, they get gigantic. Um, but I never see him because he just hides in this Amazon sword force the entire time. Uh, but they're really cool. They're a gentle giant. They don't have any claws or clippers or anything like that. Um, instead, they have fans for hands, right? And what they do, they're a filter feeder. And so what you'll see them doing, you'll see them going like this, like they're just waving. And really those fans are catching any of the little particles in the water column, and that's how they eat. They catch the particles, they eat it, they catch the particles, they eat it. And so what you'll traditionally find them doing is they're gonna search until they find an area with a decent amount of flow, and then they're gonna stay there forever. And so I have a filter right here, and so the output of the filter is pouring water here, and so it's and so that's why it likes this spot, because there's a constant flow bringing in those small particles that it can grab and eat. Um, so a really cool shrimp. 
um, than I have in the bottom layer. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the middle layer. I really have three types of fish in the middle uh, layer of the water column here. And that's gonna be your ember tetras. There are small fish, maybe half an inch to an inch long. Um, and I got a decent sized school of those. And then I also have x-ray tetras. X-ray tetras get about three inches. I have about six or seven x-ray tetras. They're one of my favorite schooling fish. They're a transparent body with a black eye. That's my favorite thing about them. They got little pops of red on their tail too, but a really cool transparent fish. So if you're into transparent fish, give the x-ray tetra a try. They're really, really cool. Um, and then the third fish that kind of schools in here is the rummy nose tetra. And they hang out in the middle layer of the water column as well. Um, they have the signature red nose and they actually have a superpower. So that red nose, the brighter the red nose, the happier and healthier they are. Now when that red nose starts to fade away, then you know something's wrong, right? Something's wrong with the water quality or they're being stressed out, something's wrong. And you kinda wanna look at the tank, test your water to see what it is. Um, but that's kinda their superpower. The brighter the red, the better. The paler, eh, something's off, right? And so those are the fish that I have in the middle layer of the water column. So let's talk about the top layer. Now the top layer, what I have in this fish tank is guppies and endlers. So I have a few fancy guppies and I have a few rainbow endlers. And these endlers are absolutely gorgeous. Um, I love endlers. I personally prefer endlers over guppies, um, but I recently got into breeding guppies and endlers, right? And having little hybrids. Um, so I have uh, guppy endlers hybrids for sale on the website if you guys are interested at looking at that. Um, really cool fish and a lot of people think um, hybrids can't reproduce and that is true and false. So guppy endlered hybrids can reproduce but guppy molly hybrids can't. So it just depends what the hybrid is. Uh, but this is a really cool, very friendly fish. And my favorite part about this fish is one, they're cooked so colorful and active, but also they're a great dither fish. Now, what is a dither fish? For those of you who don't know, a dither fish is just a really active and outgoing fish that makes all your other shy fish feel comfortable. So if you have a problem with fish always hiding and never coming out, well, you probably need dither fish, right? You need another fish that's out there that will let that one that's shy feel like, okay, he's swimming it about, it must be safe. Let me swim out about. And so if you're thinking, if you have that situation where you have fish that are hide, hiding all the time or they're very skittish, get some dither fish. The type that I recommend are guppies or endlers. I think they're great, great dither fish. Um, and they're gonna occupy that top level. They kind of swim everywhere, but they spend most of their time at the top level of the fish tank. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up our video for today. Thank you guys for joining. But if you're interested in becoming a better fish keeper in just 10 minutes per week, then click the link below in, in our description to join our free newsletter where I'll be sending out tips and advice on breeding, aquascaping, and all things fish keeping weekly. Thanks, guys. See you next time.